So I know what some of you might be thinking when you see number problems, uh, considering that most of maths is number problems. I definitely agree with you. Number problems appear literally everywhere throughout the entirety of maths education, and consequently learning this stuff is probably more important than any of the others, because as nice as it is to have a good bit of geometry or trigonometry or something similar, it all comes back to using these numbers correctly. Now. You can actually split number problems into multiple different categories, as I've done here. The main one that I'm interested in here is bid maths, which is kind of our top one, which just shows how we use general operators with regular numbers. And then everything else kind of comes underneath it. Bid maths is the king up here, and everyone else underneath is just kind of working with the things that bid maths sets out. So we'll begin with bid mass, as it's probably the most important. You might hear this sometimes called mathematical operators, or alternatively the four operators, but this shows the order in which you need to do mathematical problems. So brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, bid mass. You might also see this sometimes as bod mass, uh, but it's the same sort of principle. And it shows the order in which you need to do things. And also encoded in this is all the things you'd be expected to do as a mathematician in GCSE. So for example, you might be expected to do 12 times 36, just as something that you could do without a calculator. So it's useful to know all the different techniques you're gonna need when you're doing things like divisions and multiplications. In the case of additions, we mostly need to put things into the correct columns and have various different units, which we'll talk about more in standard form. For multiplication instead, you might be expected to use something like a multiplication grid. So in this case, we do something like 10 and 2, 30 and 6, and just split everything according to its various different properties, okay? We will multiply everything together, and then add it all up, okay? So in this case, we'll get something like 300, 60, 60, which is a bit of a coincidence there, uh, and then 12, okay, which then gives our overall result of 432, okay? So that gives you an idea about the kind of skills that you might be needed to do this, but more generally in bid mass as well is taking simpler formula like this and then doing more operations to it over and over again, okay? So for example, taking 12 times 36 and then subtract 8 and then the order in which you do it. So if we just take that as an example here, if we move our entire grid across here, and I instead add a minus eight at the end, then you might be confused as to do, well, do you do 12 times 36 first and then subtract eight, or do you do 36 subtract eight, then multiply by 12? In this case, bid mass gives us the answer where we do, okay, are there any brackets? No. Indices? No. Division? No. Multiplication? Yes, we do that first, and then we move on to something like, say, subtraction. So in this case, it would be that minus eight, which will then give us a quite satisfying four, two, four, okay? So one thing which this does illustrate, though, is if any of you are a bit confused about to remember the order of this, generally it's good practice whenever doing maths and CSN exams to bracket everything. This is much more clear. You do everything in a bracket first, then everything out of the bracket. And everything from here follows along from bid mass. In no particular order, then, I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick standard form. So standard form is another very common number problem where what we do is, is we take numbers and we turn them into, well, a standard. So for example, if we had a number like say 3,000, that's three with then three zeros at the end, okay? Now this is the equivalent of doing three times 10 times 10 times 10, okay? Seems obvious, right? That's no problem there. And this is where we introduce these indices that we were just mentioning. So an indice is like saying multiply by something a certain number of times. The way you write an indice is you would do, in this case, if we're multiplying by 10 three times, we'd multiply by 10, and then you'd write a three here. It's called a power of three. Now, some of you might recognize this already. This is what it looks like when you're squaring something, okay? You put a number at the top, and that's all an indice is. Multiplication is like saying do an addition this many times, and indices are like saying do a multiplication this many times. So some of you might be wondering, well, why do we bother putting something in standard form? And it's not necessarily something that you do as often in math so much as this is a skill that you'd see vastly more in things like physics and engineering. So for example, if you're dealing with very big numbers, the mass of the Earth is going to be on the order of times 10 to the power of 24. So that's 24 zeros at the end of the mass of the Earth. That's measured in kilograms. That gets very tedious to write over and over again. One thing you're going to learn plenty is the fact that scientists are quite lazy. And so we invent standard form as an easier way to do these kind of operations. In addition to that, it also means that you can treat this sum a lot more easily by doing other things. By that I mean, if we have 3 times 10 to the 3, 
and then say I want to multiply that by, we'll go for 9 times 10 to the minus 2. We get this interesting effect where the 3 and the 9 can multiply, and that's just one digit multiplication, which is pretty straightforward. In this case, that's 27. And that's multiplied by, and then basically we're saying multiply by 1,000, and then we're also going to be multiplying by 10 to the minus 2. So we think about what minus 2 means. So if it's a positive number, that 10 to the power of 3, that means multiply 3 times. Minus 2 would mean divide twice. So in this case, we get 27 multiplied by, well, if you're multiplying by 10 3 times and dividing by 2, by dividing by 10 twice, you get times 10 to the power of 1. Okay, which just means one zero, so two seventy. Okay, so standard form is very useful for doing things like that. Fractions is our kind of next topic here, which I'm not going to spend too long on. Fractions are just a way of writing numbers of rather than doing uh, on one line something like say multiplication, like say doing two divided by three. We instead write it as two over three like that. Now, some of you may never have noticed this before. If you actually look at the divide by symbol, you may notice that it's two dots with a line underneath, uh, with a line between them. And that's all that division sign means. It's saying, okay, just take this number and put it in this dot, that number and put it in this dot, and then we get two divided by three, okay? We're not too fussed about fractions at the minute, and we'll show that in an easier example next, but fractions are just a way of representing this data in general. It's something which is quite useful because it means that you can add different quantities together without worrying about decimals too much, which is something which in math is a lot more important. The last sort of skill I want to talk about today will be factorization, which is taking a number and breaking it down to something more similar. We're already seeing how there's a lot of dependence on different skills here because factorization actually relies quite heavily on the use of standard form. So for example, factorization would mean if we take, say, a number like 12, how many ways could we write 12? Factorizing it means breaking it down to simpler parts. So in this case, we could break it down into 2, and then that'd be multiplied by 6, and that'd be one way we could factorize it. Then we could also break that 6 down into 2 times 3, which means that we can actually simplify this down to 2 times 2 times 3, which we can then simplify even further down to, well, if we're doing 2 twice, that's 2 squared, 2 twice, and times it by 3. And if you want to, you can put a little 1 here, saying just multiply by 3 once. But that's a way that we can break down 12. And if we were to then put that into something, say a fraction, we might discover that it can simplify even further. One thing which we're not going to have time to talk about today is thirds, but this is another important skill when doing uh, number theory. It's just something to keep in mind going forward. Okay. So if we do some examples of this, we'll begin with bid mass. So these are mostly exam questions. This here is not an exam question, but this actually comes from a maths challenge. So strictly speaking, it's actually even harder than quite a few maths problems. So Lottie has a bag of apples. She gives half of them to Fred. Fred eats two and has four left. How many apples did Lottie have at the start? So although it doesn't look it, this is actually a question of how do we represent this information as best we can. So in this case, we're going to represent the number of apples as A. Okay. So Lottie has a bag of apples. She gives half to Fred. So we're having them, okay? And the equivalent way of saying having in maths is dividing by two, okay? And then Fred eats two, so subtract two, and then he has four left. So we know that the end result is going to be four. We want to find out what this original A was. And again, it's not immediately obvious what the first sort of steps that we should do here, okay? So we're going to refer to bid mass, okay? So there's no brackets, there's no indices, division. Okay, so the division happens first. So we can rewrite this as A, over 2, and that'd be the way that we'd write it to avoid confusion, okay? Minus 2 equals 4, so then we go along, is there any multiplication? Addition, okay, not really. Subtraction, there are these, this is minus 2, so to balance this equation, we put the 2 to the other side, so we get a over 2 equals 6, and then multiply by 2 on both sides gives us a equals 12. So the original number of apples was 12. Next one up, we have standard form here, and this is similar to what I was saying before. Work out the value of 1.8 times 10 to the 5 divided by 9 times 10 to the 2. So in this case, we're doing a very similar problem to before. So just like before, we're going to rewrite, rather than writing divide here, as 1.8 times 10 to the 5, all divided by 9 times 10 to the 2. So it's like saying 1.8 and then multiply it by 10 five times, divided by 2, divided by 9, multiply by 10 twice. So in this case, we could do 1.8 divided by 9. You can do this in the calculator. It turns out that's 0 0.5. And then we're doing 5 lots of uh, 10 divided by 2 lots of 10. 
So that's going to be three lots of 10 in the end. And twice in standard form, we don't actually include decimal points in this case. Instead, what we would do is say, okay, that's the equivalent of doing five divided by 10. So that'd be five times 10 to the two. We're taking that three and we're knocking it down by one. Okay. That gives you an idea about how to do some of these standard form issues. Okay. Last one we're going to do today is fractions. And then I'll leave these two here as a bit of a challenge for you guys to do. So looking at these fractions, a water container is one eighth full. 45 liters of water are now poured into the container. The container is now three quarters full. When the water container is full, how much water uh, does it hold? So the way we might write that is that we've got one eighth of the full amount. So we can call that full amount of this container W for water. We then add 45 liters. And now it is three quarters full. So three divided by four of this water. Okay. To make everything look the same as best we can, it's actually going to be a lot easier if we take this one eighth here and this three quarters here and try and turn these to have the same denominator, make this number the same on both sides. So in this case, we could say that one eighth of the water plus 45 liters is going to be equal to six over eight W. That's the exact same thing. That's like saying how many sixes can go into eight. It's the exact same way of saying how many threes can go into four. Okay. We can then subtract this one eighth from this side. So we end up getting that 45 liters is equal to five eighths of the total water. And then we're going to need to multiply across and divide. So we multiply by eight on both sides. We get 45 times eight equals five W divide by five, which means that we then get 45 times eight divided by five equals the amount of water. 45 over five is nine times eight equals 72 liters. Okay. That gives you a very quick idea of the kind of problems that you'd end up getting with fractions and the kind of skills that you'd need to do, making sure to multiply and give things the same denominator. Lastly, we have factorization. I'll leave this a challenge for you guys. Write 36 is a product of prime factors. So break it down as much as possible and give it in the same form as we just discussed. And this little indices challenge here, which is a ball is dropped and bounces up to a height that is 75% of the height which is dropped. It then bounces 75% again and again. How many bounces until it's less than 25%? That's quite a tricky problem, this one. So I look forward to seeing some of the answers. I'd recommend that you guys put them into the chat below if you've got any ideas. And if not, feel free to leave any comments or questions and I'll be, do my best to answer them. So best of luck in your studies and hopefully you enjoy number theory.